We've discussed before how Coldbox is a front controller MVC framework, and that means that all the URLs for your application go to the index.cfm page. And we don't really have individual pages in our Coldbox app. We have handlers and actions instead. They all eventually get turned into URLs that are just fed into index.cfm with event equals some handler action on the end of that URL. And that's how Coldbox routes between the different places in your application. So when you use an anchor tag in your code, you could set up the href to point to index.cfm event equals whatever the action is for the page you're trying to link to. But the better way to do things is by using a method in Coldbox called build link. You can see build link here in the Coldbox documentation. Here we've got the users list page from our app, and there are links to the details pages for the corresponding users. If you look at the lower left corner of my web browser as I'm moving my mouse over these links, you can see that the URLs are all slash users slash details and then the user ID number. There's no visible query string because we're using search engine safe URLs, which is turned on by default in my Coldbox application. Let's take a look at how those links are being generated in our code. Here's our loop for creating the links. For now, you can ignore the three commented outlines of code at the top. The one we're using is the one at the bottom for, of the CF loop. Instead of hard coding the URLs, we're using the event.buildLink method. I'm passing in two arguments here. The to parameter is just the name of the event we want to link to. In this case, it's the details method in the user's handler. And the query string parameter is just that, any data that we want in the query string for this URL. It's the exact same as it would be in a regular URL, just key value pairs. And if you have more than one, you separate them with ampersands, just like you would in traditional URLs. Let's take a look at that in our application. Here I can just click on a page and you can see we're gonna go from the users slash list page over to user details and then our variable user ID is also formatted with the search engine safe URL formatting. So you're never gonna see the question mark user ID equals three sort of syntax you would in a traditional application. That's just because I have the search engine safe URLs turned on in our app. If I go back to my page, we can click on another one. We'll go to Paul McCartney this time. We can see all the URLs work the exact same way. And they're all being generated from this event.buildLink function that we have here to use your details, query string equals user ID. And then this is the query coming out of our PRC scope and or PRC uh, object rather, and getting the query, getting our user ID out. It's appending that on to the end of our URL, that event link that event build link is creating for us. Here on the details page, we have this link at the bottom that takes us back to the list page. Let's take a look at the code that generates that. Notice how this link is not being built with the build link method we just talked about earlier. Here we're using event.route, and we have a thing that says user manager, which is not an action in our users handler anywhere. So how does this part work? Well, we're using a feature here called named routes. Take a look at our router CFC file for a minute here. In our router CFC file, I've added a route at the bottom that looks for the pattern slash users slash list that points to the target event users.list that we've been using in our previous examples. It's also got a name parameter set to user manager. This is the route name, and that's how we're able to say event.route in our details CFM page and route to the event list by item name. You can add as many named routes as you'd like. It can be a handy way to link to your different pages in your site and combine them together. Then if your handlers change names or certain functionality moves from one handler to another, you don't have to rebuild all the links in your application. You just keep the route name and update the target parameter in that line of the router CFC file. Your app will have all the new functionality with no broken links anywhere in your code. There are some other helper methods in the event object that can be useful for determining things like the name of the event that's currently running, if it has a named route, and a few other things. Here on our list page, we've added some code that looks for the URL parameter show route info. I've got an if statement in the view, and it will show us the results of those methods on our users list event page. We can use these helpers to get the current route being executed, the current route URL, the route name if one is in use, and a few other things. Documentation on how these helper methods work and more info about the event.buildLink method are all available in the Coldbox documentation on coldbox.ordisbooks.com. You can check that out on this page here specifically, the building routable links area, where you've got this information at the bottom, 
describing the four different metadata functions we just discussed. Now I'm going to take a quick demo for you and show how those things will work. Let's come back here to our list page and let's take a look at that code again for a moment. You can see if we add show route info to our RC scope, which remember that's the same as the URL scope basically. I'm going to copy that parameter, go back here to our URL and add question mark show route info equals one. And here's the output of those four helper methods we discussed a minute ago. You can see get current route name returns user manager, get current route shows us users slash list, and we have a few other bits of info below that as well. Depending on what you're doing in your application, you might find this stuff useful if you have to determine what route is actually being executed right now. Maybe you have some different events that are combining things together. You might have an application with various customized uh, routes being used in your app. Sometimes these router CFC files can get kind of complex that way if you have a larger application with lots of things going on with it. And these functions can be very helpful in determining what's going on where and debugging a few issues in your whole box applications. We'll be building links to various sections of our app in other videos throughout the video series, so you'll get more practice building them as well as using the event.route method, the event.buildLink method, and using a router CFC file in combination with those things.